Venom, Let There Be Carnage might not have been a great movie, but is this Carnage a great action figure? Yes, absolutely yes. Stick around and find out why. Starting with the packaging, and Cletus comes in that new style of Marvel Legend window box. The Marvel Legend logo is up here in the corner, the logo is down here, and the name is on the side. We also see that movie logo again up here. Also, if you look, you can see that gooey symbiote texture in the background. We do get a full body shot on one side, the other just has more window. For those looking for Carnage in store, here's the UPC, and then on the back we get some key art of Venom and Carnage squaring off. I will say there is a certain classiness to this new style of box, in the same way as those Infinity Saga ones, but as an aging millennial and especially toy collector, I obviously hate change and don't understand what was really wrong with these. If anything, it kind of reminds me more of a DC Multiverse box. Still, it is a pretty impressive package, and I'm committed to remaining open-minded. For packaging, I'm giving Carnage 5 points. Moving on to presentation, and Carnage stands at a colossal 8.5 inches, or 22 cents. Centimeters. Don't get me wrong, I remember that Cletus was a big boy in the movie, but I didn't realize just how big he actually was. For scale, and here he is with Venom, who himself is seven and a half. Needless to say, this is all new tooling and has a lot of detail. At first I thought maybe they just shrunk down Surtur, but that's actually not the case. Every gross sinew of symbiote goodness is present and accounted for. Additionally, there are symbiote tendrils popping out all over his body. By which I mainly just mean his arms and legs. Consistent with the movie design, and he has some bare feet with some claw-like toes. It's the claw-like hands, though, that I particularly like. Because of how big he is in relation to Cletus, there's a gap in the fingers, and that kind of thing just adds a really fun sense of depth. Another thing I appreciate is all that black dry brushing to bring the detail out. Obviously, that's synonymous with Carnage, and I'm really glad that the movie stuck with it. Turning it around, and we can see that Hasbro didn't exactly stick with it. That being the case, though, all the unpainted plastic does give us a much better idea of the level of detail that's in the skull. Heh, <laughs> carnage butt. In fact, the craggy texture and black dry brushing is why I originally thought this might have been a shrunk down surter, especially when we get to the head. Don't get me wrong, this is unmistakably Cletus Cassidy, but if you notice, all the craggy texture doesn't exactly continue up to the scalp. In general, though, I really love the amount of personality in this face. Just look at that demented grin. Although I did enjoy the first Venom movie well enough, I really did not care for Let There Be Carnage. That said, this figure is really turning me around. An action figure for Form, I can finally get an appreciation for what a good job they did bringing him to life. Docking it ever so slightly for the unpainted sections and for presentation, I'm giving this Carnage four points. Moving on to posability and the articulation on this Carnage is incredible. From the top and Cletus's head is on a dumbbell joint, he can look up this high and all the way down, great serial killer level of tilt, and all the way around. Moving down he can raise his arms 90 degrees, I almost get the impression that they can go even further if not for these tendril bits. No butterfly joint or anything like that, but he does have full 360 rotation, bicep swivel, pinless double jointed elbows with a perfect bend, and at the ends of those arms are wrists that can swivel and hinge. Shifting to the torso and Carnage has a diaphragm joint and a reverse ab crunch. Utilizing both, he can arch back this far and hunch forward this far. He also gets a great amount of tilt and twist. Below the waist and Cletus has ball jointed hips. He can only only kick this high, but he does get a really good split. And then traveling down the leg, and he has thigh cut, pinless double jointed knee with a nice deep bend, and Marvel Legends ankles that can hinge. And like my feelings on Venom, let there be carnage thanks to this action figure. Pivot. In terms of joints, I really couldn't ask for anything more. If I did have one complaint, the ankles, at least on mine, are a bit on the loose side. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy. So happy that for posability, I'm giving Carnage 5 points. Moving on to playability, and that's the best part of this Carnage figure. First things first, he comes with this alternate right hand. Kind of looks like a horror version of a carpet knife. Again, I love all the little gaps inside that give it that gooey, realistic feel. Kind of a shame, though, they didn't paint both sides. Fortunately, that is not the case on this alternate left hand. This is a much larger blade. Also, I do really love that they gave it articulation. And if you wanted to, you could technically use it for his right hand. Cletus also comes with an alternate head, similar to Venom, and he has a long waggly tongue. I love the sinews on the sides of the face. You can actually see inside of his mouth. It kind of reminds me of a xenomorph from the Alien franchise. Just this alone is impressive, but Hasbro didn't stop there. Remember these three peg holes on his 
back, that's for the Symbiote Tentacles. This one's a twofer. It's got a ghastly blade on one tip and this spiky number on the other. This one's also a twofer. It has that same claw as the other one, but the other one's more of a spiky hand. Lastly, there's this standalone with a menacing spike at the tip. The best part? All of them are bendable. Fully assembled and with all of his various bells and whistles, this thing is spectacular. Well, of course, playability is more than just weapon hands and bendable tentacles. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. For the first and most obvious comparison, and here we have the movie version of Venom, there is a new one coming out which I've pre-ordered, but I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get it or not. That said, for a very different kind of movie Venom, and here we have Hasbro's 360 Unleashed version of Spider-Man 3, these actually scale pretty well. And as long as we're talking about larger Venoms, we might as well bring out Marvel Select. For some comic-style Marvel Legends, though, and here we have this one from 2014, the Deluxe Monster Venom. The proportions on these two kind of remind me of Bob and Larry from Veggie Tales. If you like to talk two tomatoes. Here we have the Amazon 3-pack, and coming full circle, and here we have the King in Black version, which was built off of the movie Venom Body. As long as we're talking about King in Black, we might as well bring out Null. After all, he is God of the Symbiotes. As for a few other carnages, and here we have the Marvel Legends Monster Venom Wave version, Absolute Carnage, who's made out of vodka, and for the only one that comes even remotely close to the movie version, and here we have Marvel Select. For Cletus's One Bright Light, here we have Shriek. As for some movie versions of Spider-Man, which Carnage could come up against, and here we have Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, who was pretty jealous about not having fought an alien, and Tom Holland in his spiffy new final swing suit. As for some comic versions, though, and here we have Pizza Spidey, the Space Venom Wave Ultimate Spider-Man, which is new to my collection, the Retro Card version, the Renew Your Vows 2-pack version, the version from the Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends 3-pack, the Mafex Classic Comic Book Style Reissue, and the Marvel select spectacular Spider-Man. Huh, this is weird. What's weird? I'm used to doing this with Pizza Spidey. Lastly, and as always, here's Carnage with Stealth Iron Man. Thanks to all the add-ons, the shelf presence of this figure is through the roof. The only challenge is that he's also as tall as a roof. For playability, I'm giving this Carnage five points. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. This Cletus Cassidy costs 40 bucks and is worth every single penny. Compare this to a DC Multiverse Mega Fig. They cost exactly the same amount, but often have less articulation and hardly ever have any accessories. By contrast, the amount of value packed into this box isn't just good, it's killer. For price, I'm giving Carnage five points, averaging out to a near perfect total of four points. 0.8 out of 5. So then, is this the best Carnage figure ever made? That's a debate for another day, and there's just one more Carnage I'm waiting for first. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.